Okay, so um, getting back to Galatians. Certain from James. Galatians 2.11 But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For, uh, for before that certain came from James, he did, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. <clears throat> Paul was a people pleaser. Even in his bravado, he desired to please people. He wanted to please the Lord and desired to be recognized as the one that loved the Lord the most and was the most devoted. I'll follow you to death. Jesus said, before the cock crows three times, you'll deny me. He found himself denying Jesus to a little girl at the fire. The little girl said, didn't we see you among the disciples? He cussed her out and denied it. He went away weeping because he had failed. People pleasing makes you alternatively fearful and bold, depending on whether you think you will suffer loss or win adulation. His reputation in Jerusalem had suffered because he had gone and eaten at Cornelius' house with the Gentiles. Ultimately, he couldn't find any rest in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, they did not fully understand God's New Testament economy and what is the body of Christ. Nor could they have, be, nor could they have, because it would have come from Paul, and he had not gone to talk to them to any of them. God chose to hide that mystery and not reveal it until Paul came. Amen. Poor Paul, to have to carry around a revelation that seems contradictory to the way that the apostles of the Lord spoke. The apostles of the Lord who were with him for three years on the earth didn't speak of the body and the new man and of the habitation of God and the church as the mystery of Christ and Christ in you, the hope of glory, and the spirit of Jesus as being crucified with Christ and being risen together with him. That didn't come out of the earthly ministry of Jesus. It came out Oops, excuse me, went the wrong way. <laughs> it came out of the heavenly re revelation that the ascended Christ gave to Paul years later. Why did God do that? God is not interested in a religion centered around men being raised up. It becomes overwhelmingly oppressive. Amen. Even in the good thing Jesus started, he held back some of the truth and revealed it to Paul to be a stumbling block to Jerusalem. People needed to go through what he went through. Jesus told him, once you are converted, shepherd the flock. You see him shepherding the flock in his epistles in a way that you don't see in the book of Acts. Amen. In the book of Acts, he's bravely preaching to the, to the Jews and doing the miracles. It's honestly somewhat terrifying. Ananias and Sapphira uh, fall dead at his feet. There is so much authority and power as God is vindicating the resurrection of Christ. And I just want to add, you know, if, if you are like under condemnation or in a situation where you um, just need the comforts of Christ and everything, Peter's, apost or Peter's epistles are awesome to uh, gain more Christ and just uh, bask in his love and his um, understanding of, uh, you know, wisdom and learning how to just rest in whatever situation you're in. So just a little added tidbit there um, that I thought I'd, add, I thought I'd uh, share with you. Uh, for those who don't know, I know a lot of you already know this, but I just thought I'd mention it. Okay, that is not the best atmosphere to shepherd bruised reeds and smoking flax and wounded, wounded and beaten sheep. The, sh the, church, the, the church life is where that should happen. What you see after Acts is the epistles with the church life. The church life is supposed to be like a family. It's not this radical adventure. It is a quiet living in households. That's where Peter eventually became the living stone. 
He was transformed so that when he writes his epistles, they are so full of nourishment and gentleness and glory and love. Amen. He needed a stumbling block. He didn't have it all. He had to listen to Paul. Many who are first, many who are first shall be last. This is the way God works. He will hide some truth. It was, or it has all been revealed. But he progressively revealed things and shows, or progressively revealed things and chose vessels that were despised to reveal it through. He does this to put at naught the strength of the flesh, and the wisdom of the flesh. Amen. The wisdom of God is hidden in a mystery, and God chose not noble, or not many noble, wise, or powerful, but the foolish things, that the things the world despises. Paul had not even been with Jesus in his earthly ministry. Who was he to reveal these things? Who was he to rebuke Peter? The religion... In Jerusalem centered so much around the flesh the, the religion in Jerusalem centered so much around the flesh that's why James was exalted he was the Lord's brother according to the flesh he was the next in line to the throne of David of course he has to have the authority everyone respected James Peter should have had the lead but eventually James is presiding over the council in Acts, and later historians like uh, Eusebius are saying he took the epistle, uh, uh, Episcopal throne in Jerusalem. That's how they looked at it. This is overly exalted flesh. Amen. Paul said, we no longer know anyone according to the flesh. We used to know Christ according to the flesh. There is a new revelation. A body of truth from the ascended Christ concerning the implications of what he accomplished on the cross for the church and what is the church and what is his role now. Most people think Jesus is just up in heaven waiting for the rapture. They don't know anything about his high priestly ministry to dispense himself as life for the body up, up for dispense himself as life for the body up the uh, up of the body of Christ I don't understand that okay we're gonna just skip that um, which is all in Paul's epistles so their whole life is just waiting for the rapture to the point that it becomes an idol because it is gutted from the present reality of Christ amen he can't or you can't know the you can't know that apart from Paul's ministry you don't get it from the synoptic gospels you get it from paul's gospel which is romans the fifth gospel amen there is a record of jesus on the earth and what he did that's what most of the apostles witnessed then jesus went to heaven and was hidden from their eyes he ascended and yes they received the spirit as a clothing of power they knew their sins were forgiven but they still thought thought of it in terms of Israel's new covenant and thought the Gentiles needed to be under the law. They were still loyal to the temple. They believed Gentiles needed to come to learn from the Jews and be proselytes. James was eventually considered the best to lead the church because he was the Lord's brother. Ironically, James wasn't even with the Lord during the earthly ministry. He was with his other brothers who mocked the Lord, saying, Why are you hiding? If you do these things, go do a miracle for the world to see. John 7, 4. Amen. The Lord did appear to him in resurrection, and he did love the Lord and serve the Lord. But his claim to the throne of David and his bloodline and being the brother of Jesus eclipsed in the mind of everyone in Jerusalem any lack he had. They rejected Paul because he wasn't there with Jesus, but neither was James. I'm not saying that James and Paul were against each, each, each other. I'm saying the people were surrounded, or the people who surrounded James and overly exalted him 
and gave too much weight and credibility to him pitted that influence against Paul's ministry and created problems everywhere Paul went. Amen. The root of the issue was flesh versus spirit. I know that these are historical tangents, but they bring an interesting perspective. This is really what happened and how messy it was in the book of Acts. When you know that, you can take some pleasure, or excuse me, you can take some pressure off. What was that? Oh, <laughs> um, sorry about that. Uh, where was I? Okay. When you know that, you can take some pressure off yourself to try to reconcile everything James said with what Paul said. You can say, I don't know. I believe the Holy Spirit inspired it. But I'm going to stand with the gospel and I'm not going to accept any interpretation of James that overturns my understanding of the gospel. You don't even need to dig further than that. Various people come to various conclusions about James, but you cannot use that one epistle to overthrow the doctrine from heaven that was given to Paul. Amen. That doctrine was the basis of Paul's authority. He rebuked with all authority. Not because he was something, but because he knew he was standing with the truth. Amen. The good news about this is that it gives us all a chance to stand in the truth and operate with the authority of the head when he, when when we stand in the gospel. Any of us, oops, any of us, has a right to stand for the gospel and function in our gift and speak even if it brings problems for people who are walking contrary to the truth. That's not because we are divisive. They are the ones who have the issue. Verse 13, And the other Jews dis disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they, were, that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before, before them, all if, if you being a Jew live, live after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compel the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Paul says he saw they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel by shrinking back from the Gentiles. They were not walking according to the truth of the gospel. As we have said, this is what it means to walk in the spirit. It is to walk in the liberty that we have in Christ according to the truth of the gospel. Amen.